chapter 18, and we're going to read verses 10 and 11 for our consideration on this morning. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. John chapter 18, verses 10 and 11, the Bible says, Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear, and the servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put out thy sword into thy sheep. The cup which my father has given me shall I not drink of it. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in, in thy sight. Pray with me if you will. Father God in heaven is indeed we are grateful for another day that you've blessed us with, for another opportunity that we have to come and feast at the table of your word. Somebody came looking for you this morning, Jesus. I pray that they'll find you. Somebody came weighed down with the cares of this world, Father. I pray that you'll lighten their load. Father, somebody is yoked down, Father, with this life. Father, I pray that you loose those yokes here on this morning. And Father, if you do this for us, we'll be so ever mindful to glorify you. Father, hide me behind your cross that no flesh will take any glory in what you ought to receive. And we'll be so ever mindful to glorify you and to praise your name for doing so. It is in the name of Jesus we pray that all those that love God say amen. 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 I want to talk to y'all this morning. Maybe you know him. Uh, maybe you've heard of him a time or two. I want to talk to y'all about a man that meant to do good. I want to talk to you about a man that meant to do good. Cutting out folk, ear, how's that good? I'm going to tell you about a man that meant to do good. We all got our favorites in the Bible. But for me, out of Jesus and Paul, I probably put Paul number two. One of my favorite people is Simon Peter. And I love the fact that he was a man who was not perfect, but he always meant to do good. It doesn't, it didn't say that he always did good, but he meant to do good. He testifies to the fact that mistakes don't have to be fatal. This Peter, that Peter is someone who is always failing forward, that when he failed, he didn't let his mistakes push him further away from God, but he was forever falling and failing forward, trying to get closer to God, even though he made some mistakes. Now, anytime the devil gets in your mind that you're nobody, nowhere headed to no place, I want to remind you of a man that meant to do good. There's something about Simon Peter that he always has a comeback spirit, a comeback spirit. And after Jesus was crucified and he knew that he had failed, he knew that he had did wrong and all of those things that he lost all hope of God ever using him in the ministry. And he went back to his fishing business and he went out on a fishing boat and he was out there fishing. And while he was fishing, the Bible says that he saw a silhouette of a tall, lean Galilean, and even though it was a long ways off, he knew exactly who that man was. And he had lived with that man for three and a half years and followed him, and when he saw that silhouette, he instantly, with all of his flaws, with all of his failures, he threw his coat off, jumped into the water, swam over a hundred yards to get to Jesus, because he was always trying to get to him, to get near him him and to get close to Jesus. He went back to his cussing habits. Amen, somebody. He went back to his denying habits. He went back to his forsaken habits. To look at somebody and say, I got some habits too. I got some, I got some habits too. I ain't going to tell you what my habits are, but get what? I got some habits too. Yeah, if you say you ain't got no habits, you're lying. The truth ain't in. You're lying. The truth ain't in. He went, he went back to his cussing habits, to his forsaking habits, and he might as well go back to his old job. He had fished and caught nothing. But when he saw Jesus, there was something in him that said, I love him. I still love him. I love him. And he couldn't hold himself back, and he jumped into the water trying to get to Jesus. 
On another occasion, he plunged into not only the water, but when all the other disciples sat on the boat in a storm, there was something inside of Simon Peter. His impulse when Jesus was around is, I've got to get near him. I've got to get to Jesus. And when everybody else was content to sit on the boat, Simon Peter, who said he's out there, and even if I got to walk and try to do something supernatural, I just got to be close to Jesus. Tell somebody I want to be close to him. He was always trying to get near to Jesus. It was his impulse. It, and he walked on the water and now he's looking on the shore. When he comes up out of that water, he's looking in the face of Jesus. The one who had been crucified. The one that had just been laid in a tomb and rose from the dead. And Jesus was cooking him a meal of, of restoration of fish and the Bible said and bread. And it's Jesus and he's looking in that face and he's got so much guilt. He's got so much condemnation. The one that he denied, Jesus said to him one question and one question only. Do you still love me? He did not ask him, why did you run away? He did not say, why did you cuss? He did not say, why did you deny me, Peter, when I needed you the most? He did not say, why did you leave me when you promised me that you'd stick by my side? Three times he asked him one question. All I care about, Peter, do you still love me? I'm not holding what you did wrong. All I care about is there's still an impulse in you to want to be near me. Yeah, you lied. I know you lied. Yes, you denied me. I know you denied me. But Jesus didn't ask him about that. Have you? And he never brought up his past. Jesus said, all I want to know is do you still love me? And I don't know how many times you run. And I don't know how many times you failed, church. But through it all, Jesus still got one question for those that are listening to me in this place on this morning. And for those of you that are watching us via live stream, I don't care what you've done. He is not in the business of asking you what you have done. He's asking you one question. Do you still love me? Because if you still love me, I'm not here to condemn you. But guess what? I'm here to give you another opportunity. I said Peter fell forward. It's better to fail with a high aim than to succeed with a low aim. I really think Simon Peter meant to do good. Even when he cut off the man's ear in the garden, as we read about, he cut the guy's ear, he meant to do good. He was trying to defend Jesus. His motive was good. Even when he cussed, he didn't mean to do it. He was warming his hand by the fire. What was he doing there? All of the rest of them had fled. He came back to get near Jesus. He knew Jesus was in Caiaphas' house. And he was endangering himself to be there. He knew it. And somebody recognized him. And the old guy came back in. And he started cussing and saying some words. But he meant to do good. I guess what I'm trying to tell you this morning, church, is God can tell the difference between somebody who sinned and somebody who messed up. But if your heart still loves him, we don't glorify sin, but I'm telling you that if you have a mindset that you are not worthy, you have the right to have that mindset. You are not worthy. If you have the mindset to think that you are not capable, you have the right mindset that you are not capable. But as a child of God, even in your weaknesses, you got to understand that the God that you serve is still strong. The God that you serve is still mighty. He said it is in your weakness weakness that I am to be made strong. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. And even though I am not able, I serve a God that is more than able. You messed up. He said you didn't measure up. But I tell you one thing, I love Jesus. And if I fail, I'm going to get up and fail forward. Church, even in your failure, you meant well. You might've got caught up in a something. The 
that somebody say you got caught up in this, you got caught up in that. Well, I might have got caught up in this, but where did you get caught up in? Now, let me contrast him with Judas. Judas is the opposite of Peter. They both failed. They both wept. Peter wept and he was restored. But Judas wept and he was never restored. Why? The intentions. The sincerity was different. One truly wept out of repentance and brokenness over what he had done. And the other one wept not for the same motive, not for the same reason. Judas wept because he was mad at himself. Judas wept because he was mad at God. Judas wept because he was mad at how things had turned out that they didn't go the way that he thought they would go. Judas planned his sin. He calculated his sin. He plotted his sin. He day after day premeditated to do what it was that he done. He sat around and wept, but he only wept because he got caught. He got paid to do what he was doing. He negotiated a deal for his sins. Peter wept because he didn't really plan to do it. Each time he messed up, he got angry and did something that he shouldn't have done. Somebody said something to him and he got mad and said something that he shouldn't have said. But he didn't sit around planning, well, when I see this person, I, I'm going to cuss them out. And when I see this person, I'm, I'm going to cut off his ear. And when I see this person, I'm going to do that and I'm going to do that. And I believe I got some people in here this morning that will be honest with me and say, Preacher, even though I'm trying to live like Jesus, even though I'm striving, every day of my life to pick up my cross and to follow after him. There are days when I fall. There are days when I fail. There are days when I'm not who God has called me to be. But I recognize that I am not what I did because my mistakes do not define me because Jesus has cleansed me in his blood. So do you see the difference? Do you see that there were different spirits? The Bible said, and this is the most touching part of the text to me, that while Peter was warming his hands by the fire, they brought Jesus across the courtyard in chains. After he had been beaten and scourged and he was bleeding and wounded, no doubt the crown of thorns had been shoved down on his head. And the Bible says, without a word being spoken. And when Jesus looked at him across the courtyard, Peter, who denied and cussed and all of those things, caught the eyes of Jesus. He caught the eyes of Jesus and the eyes of Jesus connected with Peter. Their eyes apparently he was close enough to make eye contact with Jesus. And Peter turned and wept bitterly and went off because there's a different church between being overtaken in a fall and overtaken in a sin. When you're overtaken in a sin, it's part of your walk. It's part of who you are. You have not confessed it. You have not rejected it and turned away from it. It's part of who you are. That's being overtaken by a sin. But when you fall, this is what the Bible said. The Bible says that a righteous man, if he loves Jesus, the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times in a day, but he rises again. Tell somebody you need to rise again. I know you thought that mistake was final, but guess what? You can rise again. I know everybody else said that was the end of it, but guess what? You can rise again. Child, just like Maya Angelou said, still... Still I rise. A righteous man. And that's how you know whether or not you're a child of God or not. Whether or not you're going to sit there and wallow in the hall pen of light. Or whether or not you're going to get up and you're going to actually make a difference in your life. There was. Now let me tell you. You can take a pig. I'm talking about a real pig. Oink, oink. Yeah, real pig. And I can go out and buy him a nice suit. Put a bow tie on him. Put a robe on him, have him looking clean, fresh and clean. 
put him up here, sit him on a table, and let him sit right here and preach beside me. And as soon as this service is over, bow tie and all, if there's mud outside that door, he's going to go right out there and get in the mud. Why? Because he has the nature of a pig. He's going to forget all about how holy he is and run straight for the mud hole because something in his nature loves it and says, I belong here. I love this field. I love this slop. I love this mud. This is exactly where I want to be. Now, if a sheep falls in the mud, there's a difference. He may fall in it, but instantly he's getting up because it's not in the nature of a sheep. To, I don't hear nobody this morning. He said, get me out of here. I don't like it. And the way you know whether you are a sheep or a hoe. Amen, light bulb. The way you know whether or not you are a child of God, a sheep or a goat, is what kind of nature do you have? Not that you don't fall. But when you fall... Is there something in you that said, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord. Lord, I want you to wash me, Lord. I want you to cleanse me, Lord. I want you to get it off my me. And God, by your grace, I never go back to it again. Anybody know you've been saved from that stuff? Anybody know you've been delivered from that stuff? That we as children of God are not to walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. And you can remember a time, you can remember a time when you just had to have it. But you don't even want to be around it anymore, praise God. That's the power of the cross. And I've come to tell somebody today that Jesus is calling you by name. He wants to meet you again. He wants to ask you, do you love me? Jesus didn't call him on the carpet. Jesus didn't put him down. Jesus didn't rehearse. Well, well, let's talk about this line. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this and that. Let's talk about this. No, all I want to know is after all of that stumbling and all of that foolishness, do you still love me? You see, Peter despised himself. There are a lot of us walking around despising ourselves. The Bible says that Peter despised himself. Church, and it's a dangerous thing when you reach such a low state in life that you begin to despise yourself. It's dangerous. A man by the name of Mark Rutherford said in his book that if I can write one more beatitude, it would be blessed are those who heal us from self-despising. Of all the services that can be done to an individual, I know of none more precious than to be healed from self-despising. It was true of Simon Peter. He had wounded the one that he loved the most and he could not forgive himself for it. He couldn't get over it and he was not able to live with it. And when I think of people who are turning to drugs and turning to alcohol and turning to prescriptions, they fail. They are just messed up. That maybe somebody that should have gave them some props or maybe they never had nobody in their life to, to put them up or to give them some kind of encouragement. They may have done something crazy or, or something happened to them traumatic. But I came to tell you this morning that no matter what happened to you, it does not define you. That you are not what happened to you, but you are who God says that you are and God says that I am called out. I am precious elect a royal priesthood in Christ Jesus and you may not think I'm nothing but guess what he thought I was worth dying for he gave his life so that I could have another opportunity and I don't know about y'all but I thank God for another opportunity I don't thank God for a second chance. I don't thank God for a third chance. But I thank God every day of my life for another opportunity. What a failure. It's one thing. It's one thing, church. To heal a man from despising other people. But it's another thing to help someone to stop despising themselves. It's another thing. 
But here's the word of the Lord. If it's not on God's books, it ought not be on your books. I believe I'll say that again. If it's not on God's books, then it ought not be on your books. I don't know about y'all, but my Bible tells me that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And old things are not remembered, but all things are passed away. But God has washed it off of my slate. He has made me clean. He has made me new. He has given me a brand new start. He's given me a brand new life in Christ Jesus. Three times in this book, three times in the Bible, it says, Even I am he that blots out your transgressions to remember them no more. He didn't just see it one time. Three different times in scripture. He says, even I am he that blots out your transgressions and remembers them no more. He says those words three times. I will remember your sins no more. I will remember your sins no more. I don't remember your sin. Stop despising yourself. I know if you could go back and take that moment back, you do it. But Lord knows you can't go back and change anything. God knows your heart. God knows your intention. God knows that you're striving. God knows that you're trying to do his will. And he'll help you to get to where you need to be. You are the man or woman that meant to do good. It wasn't just Peter. You are the man. You are the woman that meant to do good. You wanted to do the right thing. You did something that you shouldn't have done. It was crazy. Now you look back mad that did I have good sense? I don't know, Lord, Lord. Did I have good sense when I made that decision? My God, that was a crazy choice that I made. But you meant to do good. Anybody here this morning thankful for grace? Does this message make sense to y'all this morning? Anybody thankful for grace that can see beyond my dumb decisions? That can see beyond my dumb choices? That can see beyond the mistakes that I made? I'm so glad that I serve a God that looks beyond my faults and he meets me at my knees. He knows what we stand in need of. And just because I failed. Just because I made a decision that I shouldn't have made. I'm so glad that God is not like people and try to kill you just because of one decision that you made. Just because of one choice that you made. But I want to put somebody on alert this morning. Be careful trying to kill folks because of the decision that they made. Because the very one that you try to draw the pain will be the one that has to pray for you tomorrow. Will be the one that has to intercede on your behalf to ask God. Be careful, it's them today. It'll be you this evening. Stop despising yourself. He said, I remember your sins no more. And that's why I believe a lot of us won't really commit ourselves to God because we despise in ourselves. Out of all that I've done, out of all the decisions that I made, how can God use somebody like me? Let me tell you, God does his best work with the unqualified. God does his best work with those that are not worthy. Who's not worthy? You're not worthy. You're not worthy. You're not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. But still, every day of my life, new mercies we see every morning. Praise the Lord. If I can go back and do something about it, I would. But I can't change it, Lord. It's in your mind. Get a deal with that. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. God sees your heart. God knows. God knows. God knew the decision was crazy just like you knew the decision was crazy. 
But God said, you know what? I'm not going to define you by this one moment in your life. Yeah. And some of us can be real and say, preacher, it wasn't just one moment. It was a couple of moments. It, it wasn't just a couple of moments. Every day of my life, it seems like I'm having a moment. Something that I'm having to deal with. I don't know about y'all, but every day of my life, I just got to take a moment and say, Lord, I thank you that you do not treat me as my sins deserve. Lord, I thank you that you do not treat me like I treat you. Don't care about you. Don't love you. Won't respect you. Won't serve you. But Lord, I thank you every day of my life. Things that we don't deserve, he's giving it to us every day of my life. Give the Lord a praise because he didn't have to do it. Oh, but I thank God that he did. Bless your name, Lord Jesus. There are some Simon Peters in here this morning. Yeah, I know you didn't know it. Your name is Simon Peter. What you did was not malicious. What you did, you didn't plan to fall. You, you kind of got dragged into it by sin. You've been sorry ever since. Have you? I'm trying to talk to some Simon Peters this morning. Come on. Jesus didn't say to him, oh, oh, well, I'm glad that you love me. You're not worthy to touch my food. But Jesus put him back in the ministry. After all of that mess. And he said, feed my sheep. I'm going to give you back your ministry. Even though you failed, even though you denied me in the face of people that you could have stood up and took a stance from. Jesus said, I'm not going to kill you just because you made a bad decision. He said, you know what? I'm going to clean you up. I'm going to give you another chair. I'm going to give you another start. It's going to be like it never happened. I'm going to start it all over again. you back. I'm giving you back your calling Peter. I'm giving it back to you. I give you back your dignity. Don't walk around holding your head down. Hold your head up high. It's time out. Even though you made decisions in your life, you are not walk down depressed and feeling dejected because of the choices that you are made. Because you are a child of God, you ought to always walk around with your head held up high because you have confidence in Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus said to him, I'm giving it back to you. You'll never forget when you looked in my eyes after they had beaten me, after they had scourged me, after you had denied me. You'll never forget that guilt that you felt. You'll never forget the pain that you felt in that moment. You'll never forget. And about the time you want to get proud, You'll remember where I brought you from. The apostle of weakness. The apostle of not just weakness, but denial will become an apostle of boldness and of faith for Jesus Christ. Peter wrote two books in the Bible. He had more to say about humility than any other New Testament writer. He gave us two of the most profound scriptures on humility in the Bible. He said, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. And in due season, somebody said due season. And in due season, he will exalt you. He gives grace to the humble. Listen to him. He dipped his pen in the ink of his failure and the ink of his hurt. And he wrote, he gives grace to anyone who falls forward in humility. But he holds at arm's length. He pushes away the proud. He wrote things that still help us today. There's no friend like the lowly Jesus. The man that meant to do good. Everybody say, I'm not Judas. I may have had thoughts, but not intentions. I may have fallen, church. I may have struggled, but Jesus, I still love you. 
Lord, I know you're not pleased with the choices that I made, but I still love you. Lord, sometimes I find myself in a place and I wonder how I got here. Lord, I didn't mean to do it. Lord, I still love you. Lord, I want you to clean me up. Lord, David said, Lord, Lord, it just seemed like I'm a man after your own heart. And even though I'm trying, even though I'm struggling to do it, Lord, it seems like every day of my life I'm faced with something that turns me in opposition to what you want me to do. That's why I need you, Lord, creating me a clean heart and renew, renew, renew the right spirit within me, Lord. I need it. I need you to renew my spirit. Lord, I need you to give me another start. forgiveness church he looked beyond the bad he looked beyond the ugly he saw your heart he sees the man and the woman that's intending to do good even the apostle Paul had to stop one day and write when I desire to do good evil is always around therefore the good that I would do, I find myself not doing. And the evil that I don't want to do, that's what I do. A wretched man, not that I was, but that I am. What you talking about? Because even though I'm saved, even though I'm a child of God, even though I'm Lord of the Lord's church, every now and then, when I get to because that old man will rise back up in me and the very things I said I'd never do again. Those are the things that I find myself doing. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. So the question is, the question is, church, do you still love him? Not, 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 not have you lost this or you lost that or went out and did this and did that, do you still love him? Come on now. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners, that's you and me, for a while of lost sinners was slain. So I cherish that old rugged cross till my trophies at last I laid down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday. Good God Almighty, one day I'm going to turn it in for a crown. Backslider, Jesus is calling you this morning. Jesus is calling for folk that messed up, that messed up their life. You even despise yourself. He's calling you home. His loving arms are open this morning. He wants you to come home. Families can be healed if y'all will just get together and come home. Relationships can be mended if y'all would just get together and come home. Marriages can be healed this morning if y'all would just get together and come on home. Your life can be restored if you just come home. Just Do you still love him? Not will you do that again? Will you go out there again? Do you still love him? I thank God for the cross. I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for the sacrifice that he made. That he loved me enough to sacrifice himself for me. That he loved me enough not to leave me in my filth. Not to leave me in my choices and my decisions but to come right out there. And that's what I love about God. He's not dependent upon you to come where he is to get what you need. But he will step right down in the middle of your mess, in the middle 
of your decisions, in the middle of the trauma that you have faced, he'll step right down in the middle of it and say, I am God, and besides me, there is no other. I can do all things but fail. He'll make a difference in your life if you let him do it. Stop trying to handle it by yourself. You can't do it. You're going to destroy yourself trying to handle it. You try to follow Jesus and what he's called for you to do. But Lord knows it don't always go like that. Some days you're all of who God wants you to be. And some days you fall short of being who God has called you to be. That's why the Apostle Paul, even after this man wrote over half of the New Testament scripture, when he was writing one day, he said, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom the apostle, the man of God, the one that went all about on his missionary journeys, honeycomb in all of Asia Minor, going here and there, telling people about a man that lived, that died, and that he rose again, that same man. Say, you know what? Christ Jesus came into the world. And even though he saved you, I really needed him to save me. God can make a difference in your life. He can help you this morning. If you're willing to let him do it. That's what I love about God. He ain't coming kicking down your door. He's standing and he's knocking. Let me come in. Let me come in and make a difference in your life. I know where you've been. I know what you've done. I know the decisions that you made. But guess what? If you, for, I, I already forgot it. I just need you to forget it. I, I'm doing away with it. I just need you to do away with it. I'm glad this morning that all of those that have accepted Jesus as their Savior have obeyed the gospel and have joined with him in the watery grave of baptism, guess what? He has washed away your sins. He has cleaned the slate. You were guilty as charged, but guess what? He has proven you to be innocent, not because of what you've done, but because of the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. He's cleansed us from our unrighteousness, from our sins. And that's why we now can come boldly before the throne of God. Or we can find mercy to help us in the time of need. I don't know about y'all, but I need him. I need him to come into my life and to correct those things that are wrong. I need him to come into my life. I need him every day to walk with me. Because I'm trying to be like him. I don't want to fall short. But you see, dealing with the flesh and dealing with the spirit, it's a hard thing. Because sometimes your flesh, be real with yourself, outpowers your spirit. Some days you ain't studying Jesus. Some days you could care less what the word of God said. That's why you got to find yourself, Lord, I need your help. Lord, because Satan is putting any and everything that I could want, any and everything that I could desire, he's putting it out there. He know what I want. He know what size I want it. He know what height I want. Amen, somebody. He know where I want it at. He know how long I want. He know all of that. He knew some of y'all didn't want to come to church this morning. That's, 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 that's why so, yeah, I'm sure something may have happened to somebody this morning. You say, oh, man, I just, you know, I mean, I, I, I catch him next time. You know, I, I watch him on live stream, you know, or something like that. The devil doing any and everything that he can to take down the children of God. Doing any and everything that he can to make you a liar and to make you denounce the very God that you serve. The Bible says, resist the devil. 
and he will flee from you. Resist him, devil. You ain't got no power over here. Get away from here. Yeah, we got to stop. We got to stop just allowing sin to run rampant in our life and stop letting the devil have a hate. Hey, devil, I don't know where you're going, but you got to get away from here. You can't have my marriage. You can't have my kids. You can't have my mind. You got to get away from here. You officially been evicted. You have no room here. You have no place here. I'm God's child. I'm serving God. I'm going to live for him. And if it takes me having to fight tooth and nail with your devil, guess what? That's what I'm going to do because I'm going to serve God. And I'm going to live for him. And even though I have good intentions, Peter, 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 Peter meant, he meant well. You meant well. But the thing about it is you don't always do it. In those moments that you don't do as well as you ought to, that you don't follow God's will and God's plan for your life, I want you to recognize what you're supposed to do. Now, now here's the difference in a person that recognizes what God has done for them and a person that's not. When you fall, get back up. Just look at somebody this morning and say, get back up. You can get up again. You may have fallen, but you can get up again. If you find yourself, even this morning, overtaken in sin, guess what? I serve a God that's ready right now to clean you up, to make you new, to give you a brand new start. He's ready this morning. He just waiting on you. His question is for you, what you waiting on? All the while, you don't even know it, all the while, up until now, God been protecting you. God been covering you. Some of y'all know it here. Y'all been sick unto death, but look at you now. In the house of God, giving him praise. Some of y'all know that you, you, and all of us right now, all of us got mental issues. Amen, somebody. All of us got some mental demons that we are fighting. Amen. I'm certified bipolar. Amen, somebody. You know, I'm, man, I'm over here one day, man. Next day, I'm over here. You just don't know. You just don't know. Today I'm saying bless you. The next day, man, what you talking man, you? Catch me on Sundays, praise the Lord. You catch me on, it's a different story. The good that I would do, I find myself not doing. I want us to get to the point to where we can be real with ourselves. Not just real with yourself, but real with other people. Yeah. We, you know, sometimes we walk around like we're the next thing to Jesus. We do everything right. I don't lie. You just lied. I don't cheat. What about your taxes? Well, things I used to do, I don't do. Well, we ain't going to get into all that. You know where you was, when you did it, how you did it, when you did it. And you know all of that. Be real with yourself. And say, ain't nothing but a lump of clay on the potter's wheel. Lord, mold me in the way that you want me to be shaped. Lord, I understand that the molding process ain't, ain't going to always be easy. I know in this process, Lord, you're going to have to take some things away from me. But Lord, if it's in me and it's not like you, take it away. Deliv Lord, deliver me from people. Lord, deliver me from the opinions of people. Lord, deliver me from myself. Deliver me from my choices. From the decisions that I've made, Lord. And make me new. Make me clean. Give me a new start. And be real with yourself. Say, Lord, this might not be the last time I be this way. Because how many of y'all, I know the doctor ain't certified, but how many of y'all have had some schizophrenic moments in your life? I ain't got to say it, I'm just, same thing. 
Lord, I'm sorry. I want you to forgive me next Sunday. Lord, I'm sorry. I want you to forgive me next Sunday. Lord, I want to be real. Next day. Amen, somebody. Lord, I want you to forgive me. Because the spirit indeed is willing. But the flesh is oh so weak. That's why you got to bring yourself under subjection. Because the devil wants to have his way with you. Jesus told, he said, Simon Peter, Satan desires you to sift you like wheat. But I've already prayed for you. Now here's the thing I like about that bishop because Satan desired to have all of them. But Jesus said, Peter, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you individually, specifically. I'm praying for you because even though he desires to have all of y'all, I'm going to use you the most. I'm going to use you for my glory. Elders, deacons, those leaders that we have, he after you. He wants you. He wants to sift you like wheat. He wants to destroy your reputation. He wants to destroy your name. So when you go out trying to tell somebody, like, who, what you talking about? Tell me somebody, I know you. I know what you did. I know where you've been. Well, you might have knew where I was, but you don't know where I am right now. God has done a new thing in my life. God has forgiven me and given me a brand new start. He'll give you a new start this morning if you want it. If you desire it, God will remember your sins no more. Peter, where are you? Where you at? I know it was bad. Everybody was talking about it, I know. You didn't want to come out the house just thinking about how folk were going to look at you and what people were going to say. Some of y'all to this day don't go around people because of decisions that you made and you just wonder how they're going to feel about it. I'm not there anymore. That may used to be me, but used to be don't produce honey anymore. I'm God shy. He's doing a new thing in my life. And if God has forgotten about it, who are you to bring it back up again? I can't bring nothing up on you because guess what? I got enough that I'm going to have to stand before God and give an account of for myself. For me to be worried about you. I ain't studying you. I'm worried about me. I'm trying to save myself from this untoward generation. Because I know, just like me, at 25 years old, I know one day, maybe soon, I don't know, I hope not. What a word, Lord, you know, one day I got to stand before just God. And even though I love him right now because, oh, he's just so merciful. And he's so gracious. Oh, God, thank you for keeping it from me. One day that ain't going to be him. But when I stand before him, he's going to put on a robe of judgment. And I can speak of all the coulda, shoulda, wouldas that I want. Yeah. Ain't none of it going to do me any good. But the decisions, the choices that I've made in this life, that's why you got to be careful. Don't walk around here thinking that the decisions and the choices that you make don't really mean anything. Because guess what? It's all being written down in a book. You ain't going to be able to, Lord, that didn't happen. I got it written down. You're telling me I'm lying? You're telling me I ain't know what I saw? You're telling me my eyes were to see? I got it written down right here. This your name? This, your, this where you live? This your address? I know everything about you. I, Lee Williams, I said, Lee Williams, you sang a wrong song. Say, you can't run, you can't hide. You don't know when or how he's coming. You just can't get back. Just think about that. Think about that. Everybody in here, everybody here ain't on, the, ain't on the same level in certain places in life. Somebody may have a higher level of education than the next individual. Somebody may have a, a different perspective of this and that. But one thing 
whether you're the president of the United States, whether you are a judge, whether you are a lawyer, whether you are a doctor, whatever you are, all of us going out of here the same way. And all of us will have to stand before a just God and account for those choices, account for those decisions that you made. It's going to come up again. So if you have not yet, you need to ask God to forgive you. You need to lay it down at the feet of Jesus and let God take care of it. He's ready even this morning. Peter, wherever you are, it was wrong. It's over and it's done with now. The only thing you can do something about is right now. That's all you can change is right now. And my, that's the only thing you can alter is what's going to happen after the day. Make your decision today to say, Lord, even though I'm messed up from the head to the toe, even though I'm not all of who you want me to be, use me for your glory. Mold me how you want me to be molded. Take me through whatever I need to be taken through so I can be used by you. And give me a mind to know that even when I fall, and when I falter, I didn't say if, but when. I falter and I fall. Help me to remember that I don't need to stay there for a long period of time. But I need to quickly come back to myself and get up and recognize that I have a God that understands what I'm going through. I have a God that will meet me where I am and clean me up and give me a brand new start. Beloved, if you're here this morning, God's waiting on you. He wants to give you a brand new start this morning. Whoever you'll come to Jesus this morning, you've heard the word of God. The question is, do you believe it? Do you believe that Jesus lived, that he died, and on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures? Do you not only just hear and believe it, but are you willing now to repent of your sins, those choices, those decisions that you made. Are you now ready to ask God to forgive you of that stuff? Repent, do away with it. Get away from it and don't go back again. Are you ready now to confess with your mouth that Jesus is the son of the living God? It was actually Peter that was the first man to make that confession. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Are you not only willing to do all of that and make that confession, but are you willing now to be baptized for the remission of your sins. Are you willing now, for the Bible says, be baptized every one of you for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. God is waiting on you this morning. So if you're subject, maybe you're already here, and you're standing in the need of prayer. You say, preacher, I'm struggling. I want to be like Jesus. I want to follow him. I want to do what it is that he's called me to do. But man, I'm finding it hard because I'm battling with myself, not necessarily anybody else, but I'm battling with myself, God, to be who you want me to be. Let us pray for you this morning. Come, let us pray for you. The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous, they avail us much. My brother, my sister, wherever you are, God is waiting on you this morning. Don't put off today for what you got plans on doing. You don't know what God's plans are, but you know what you have right now this moment. Make the best of this moment. Stand as together we sing and sing the song. Yes, 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 I will come into wonder to the to be the Understands it. Why cheer up, my brother? 
loves him and live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Father, And why cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand all by and by. And why cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine, stand it all by and by.